Hi, my name is Emre Alp from Middle East Technical University and in this presentation I will talk about a comprehensive study that we just completed about water energy and food nexus evaluation in a semi-arid watershed. First of all, I want to talk about UN Sustainable Development Goals and their relation to the nexus concept. In 2015, the UN adapted the 23rd Agenda for Sustainable Development. This agenda includes 17 Sustainable Development Goals, which cover a wide spectrum of topics and issues. It is not possible to achieve each of these goals alone, but these goals are interlinked to each other. Therefore, it is required to develop an implementation approach, which is holistic, multi-sectoral, and multi-dimensional. Water energy food nexus approach comes into play at this point. Four of these SDGs are especially relevant for water energy food nexus. SDG 6, the water and sanitation goal, aims to ensure availability and sustainable water management and sanitation for all. SDG 2, the goal to end hunger, refers to achieving food security and improved nutrition and promoting sustainable agriculture. SDG 7 is about ensuring access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for all. Finally, SDG 15, the goal to preserve life on land, includes the protection, restoration, and sustainable management of ecosystems. The conceptual framework of the water, energy, and food nexus approach followed in this study is given in this figure. We aim to evaluate the current situation of water energy and food nexus for a semi-arid watershed in Turkey. The water requirements for energy production and air cultural activities were evaluated for the current situation. By developing basic specific scenarios, the decrease in water consumption were determined. Additionally, energy requirements for air cultural activities were assessed. We also evaluated the socioeconomical parameters and the effects of future climate change conditions, which are the external factors affecting the water energy and food nexus. In our study, ecosystem is among the pillars of the nexus evaluation, and ecological flow requirements were assessed as a part of the nexus evaluation. The study area, the Sakari River, is the third longest river in Turkey. It has a total length of 720 km. Sakari watershed has a semi-arid climate and the surface area of the basin covers approximately 8% of Turkey. It consists of six sub-basins. Agricultural lands constitute an important part of the basin. Study, weep and leap models were used to evaluate the water food and water energy nexus, respectively, in Sakari watershed. We first characterize the basin in terms of agricultural activities, energy protection potential, socioeconomic characteristics, in-stream water quality, and hydrological properties. In addition, pressures on water resources such as water demands and withdrawals by all sectors were assessed for the past 10 years. Water evaluation and planning system, so-called WIP model, was calibrated for in-stream flow rates, water consumptions for all sectors, and the reservoir was for the past 10 years. Then we have developed the demand-oriented management alternatives as potential solutions to identify the issues. We aim to determine the effectiveness of the management strategies using several criteria such as amount of water, and energy savings and socioeconomical benefits. These scenarios include improvement in current irrigation technology, changing the cropping pattern, and water saving irrigation technologies. To address the questions about water energy nexus security and to analyze the interlinkages between the nexus components, Integrated weep leap model is used in the middle Sakarya subbasin. When the weep and leap models are integrated, the models transfer information to each other. For instance, 
water requirements for energy production, such as cooling water requirements for thermal power plants and water for hydro power generation are modeled in VIP and integrated into the energy model. Hydro model is modeled in VIP and fed into LEAP model. LEAP responds to total electricity demands by dispatching its power mix. This mix includes all the sources of electricity generation in the time step, including VIP's estimate of the available hydropower, as well as the other electricity sources such as coal, natural gas, nuclear, and etc. Up to now, we have focused on three main sectors water, energy, and food. However, in an ideal sustainable water management context, there is a fourth dimension which is generally ignored. And this dimension is actually the heart of these interlinkages defined as the ecosystems. In this second figure, water quantity and quality links are presented. For example, on the left side of the figure, water should be released from hydropower plants to the downstream to maintain energy security. As the downstream receives this water, a cultural sector needs irrigation water to sustain food security and other needs. Irrigation water constitutes almost 70% of global withdrawals. Due to this huge amount of withdrawal water, the river ecosystems usually cannot receive su sufficient amount of water for their processes, functions, and dynamics. Our study aims to allocate water between water, energy, food, and ecosystem components. And the ecosystem element refers to environmental flows for the river ecosystems. So this study evaluates environmental flows needs in Sakari watershed within water energy food nexus framework. So in this study, environmental flow assessment was conducted by using three most commonly Used methods in the literature. These methods are used to calculate minimum environmental flows to be released into river ecosystems. These methods are weighted parameter, flow duration curve analysis, and tenant methods. As I mentioned, we used WEAP model to evaluate the effectiveness of several agricultural activities in terms of water savings. In the scenario evaluation, the best management alternatives have been determined as pattern change applied for feed crops, pattern change applied for oil seeds, deficit irrigation applied for cereals, and switching irrigation techniques from sprinkler to drip irrigation. The results show that maximum 60 million meter cube of irrigation water per year can be saved for the most effective scenario. This is the equivalent of irrigating approximately 280 km square of sugar beet. In addition to single management alternatives, we also evaluated the effectiveness of combined best management practices under climate change conditions. Irrigation shortfall decreased by up to 67% with combined measures under even climate change conditions. Within the scope of economic analysis, gross production values and net profit per one meter cube of irrigation water were calculated for the most effective water saving air cultural strategy. It was found that approximately 10 and 5 US dollars can be saved for each meter cube of water saved in terms of gross production and net profit respectively. We evaluated the water energy nexus in terms of two criteria, annual water consumption and annual energy generation. Scenarios of VIP leap integration gives the best results in terms of both water savings and energy production in the middle Sakarya Basin. These scenarios include base, least cost electricity generation, cooling system modification, no thermal power plant, and climate change scenario. In dry cooling system scenario, wet cooling systems of all thermal power plants are converted into dry cooling systems. In the climate change scenario, change in precipitation, temperature, and in stream flow rates were reflected in these simulations. 
The results show that while meeting all energy needs, annual water consumption for energy purposes can decrease by 26% compared to base scenario. These potential changes in water potential and demand are reflected in the model and the changes in the electricity generation distribution are investigated. At the end, it was found that while a small amount of decrease in is predicted in the working capacity of the hydro power plants, there is an increase in the capacity values of the thermal power plants to meet the electricity demands. In terms of ecosystem components of the Nexus evaluation, we have found that among all these three minimum environmental flow methods, the weighted parameter method is the most reliable method to determine the environmental flow needs in Sakari River. This is because weighted parameter method not only uses the hydrological data, but also it takes stream bed and bank morphology into consideration by connecting the flow data with the weighted parameter of the stream beds. In this study, we aim to develop and apply methodology which will help to develop strategies for sustainable water management and ensuring water energy food security at watershed scale. What distinguishes this study from many other water energy food studies is that ecosystem is included as one of the pillars of the nexus and the study focuses on water energy food nexus evaluation at the watershed scale. Moreover, while trying to achieve sustainable development goals, it is of great importance to consider the future climate and socio-economical changes in the management of resources. However, few studies in the literature examine the impact of socio-economic changes on the system functioning and nexus relationships in a holistic manner. So we believe that this study will fit the, fill the gap in this context and set an example for other studies. We would like to acknowledge the Scientific and Technological Research Council of Turkey for providing funding for this project. Thanks for listening and if you have any questions, uh, you can send an email to me as shown uh, in this slide.